In our last couple of sermons, we talked about emotional abuse and manipulation. We're going to continue with part five. And today we're going to talk about healing of emotional abuse. We may not get into the full healing part, but we want to build up to healing of emotional abuse and manipulation. First Peter chapter five, verse 10, but the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered, everybody say suffered, suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So see, there's hope for those that are suffering because God is able to bring us out of that suffering and restore, strengthen, and stabilize you after your hardships, including past and present emotional abuse and manipulation. And those listening to this may have been on the abusing end, or they may have been the one abusing. So we can abuse and we can be abused. So either way, it's abuse. And either way, it is not good. And it messes with the inner man, the soul. We're talking about the soul now. The mind, the will, and we're on the emotions. God wants us to be healed transformed and stable then we can be used by him in our lives our family and the lives of others we can't be used of God if we're all over the place we can't be used of God if we're not committed to God because only by his spirit that works through us that's going to be effective in our ministry Psalm 34, 17, the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. So this is a promising scripture here because God hears our cries. And while we're crying out to God, we should always be trying to be built up in God. Let's not get to where we're wallowing in our tears, wallowing in our sorrows, wallowing in what's going on all around us, because that will take us deeper, deeper into a pit of wallowing. We must rely on scriptures like the one I just read assures us that God listens to to the cries of his people psalm 34 17 another one is psalm 147 verse 3 he healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds so first of all we've got to identify what's causing a broken heart we've got to identify it and be able to open up to god and we've got to also be able, if we go to a ministry, if we go to a church that's preaching things like I'm preaching now, we've got to be able to trust the minister and the ministry to be able to help us rise above our whatever is going on in our emotions. And the ministry, by the way, can only do it as led by God. So God needs people within the body of Christ to be able to minister to others. It's just like when we're on our workplace. If we feel like we're handling all the work and everybody else is not pulling their weight, we know how that feels. I've been there, done it. It works the same in a ministry. It works the same within the body of Christ. The whole load can't be on just a person or a group of people. 
God wants to pull in the harvest. There's many people that have family members that are falling, failing. Number one thing that God needs, I feel, in the body of Christ is prayer warriors and intercessors. People that commit and dedicate themselves to pray not only for their family and their situations, but reach out to what's going on within their local body, maybe, or whatever God builds them up to pray. Because God might want to open the doors for you to walk in to be an intercessor and a prayer warrior. Number one, we've got to start with our families. We've got to start with what's going on right in our own abode. And as I mentioned in our first sermon of this series, or one of the sermons of this series, the family setting can be one of the most treacherous settings that there is. Because it's behind closed doors and because of familiarity. And because we're around each other all the time. So careful attention has to be paid on what we're thinking about and what's coming out of our mouths. Because if you're thinking about something, say for instance, if, I'm, if a spouse is thinking about killing the other spouse and meditating how they're going to kill that other spouse, whether they're going to carry it out or not, they're still thinking about it. So it's the thought of sin. So we have to watch what goes on in our minds and we have to also watch what comes out of our mouths. But he healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. We may have some of our family members that aren't Christians that need healing of a broken heart. And sometimes people, not necessarily Christians, but people can mask what's going on inside of them. They may not let anyone know what's going on inside of them, but it might play out or manifest itself in other areas, the way they speak, the way they act. We want to talk about ministering. First, we want to talk about ministering emotional healing. Just as people can be sick and hurt in their bodies, people can be hurt, wounded, sick, and aching in their inner person. The soul includes an individual's mind, their will, and their emotions. And we covered some causes of emotional wounds and hurts last week, but I'm gonna cover a couple more today. Emotional wounds in a family environment. Emotional hurt can occur during upbringing based on home conditions, based on what was going on in your home, how your parents acted within the home, what was the day-to-day -day scenarios in the home. These emotional hurts in a family may have been caused by a dominating or abusive mother or father or both. The parents were strict in their discipline. The parents used anger or manipulation to get their way. The parents may have been suspicious of each other or other family members, may have experienced rejection by a parent or both parents. They may have had unmet needs at home. And some of those unmet needs could have been lack of appreciation or approval. Emotional pain and problems may carry into adulthood for those who could not overcome these challenges. So the input into our being is what shapes us. 
But one thing about when you become a new creature in Christ, God can transform us from what we were to conform to the image of what the Spirit of God wants us to be. There can be emotional wounds due to past experiences. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. I may still have a broken heart over something that happened many years ago, 20 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, especially if it keeps rising itself up in my mind, you see. And a lot of times the enemy puts things on our minds that we have already confessed to God. That we've already forgiven this person. We've already renounced these things. But the enemy's job is to try to creep back in and open up wounds that have already been healed. But we've got to be aware of what's going on. But the Lord is near unto those that have a broken heart. And save as such as have a contrite. Another word for contrite would be repentant heart. So we've got to walk in Christianity in repentance, in a repentant heart. We can't be of vanity or of pride. We must be of humility to be able to walk with a heart of contrition. Past painful or traumatic experiences include physical or emotional abuse, sudden loss of a loved one, trauma, betrayals, disappointments in relationships, disappointment with God because of tragedy or because he may not have answered a prayer that we wanted him to answer. Another one could have been multiple sex partners. How multiple sex partners can affect you in your emotions is that you are tied to each and every person that you've had sex with and the people that they have had sex with. So this tie is happening in the invisible realm. We have to know that these emotional wounds are unseen. Emotional wounds due to emotional attachments. We're talking about causes of emotional wounds and hurts. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 14. The spirit of man will sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit who can bear. So a strong spirit can carry a person through illness, but a crushed spirit is unbearable. We have to take the responsibility to guard our spirit man. We must put the word of God in us. We must put the things of God and do the things of God and guard and be aware of what's going on on the inside of us. Never mind all the time worried about what's going on outside of us. Because that can cause the inside of us to be in disarray. If we don't give it to God. If we don't submit it to God. Because sometimes people can walk around with added stress on their being because of trying to absorb the problems of everybody else. Nobody can do that but God. We're not God. Yes, it's noble to want to help, but God gave us this body. He said, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. And we're not glorifying God if we're trying to take on other people's issues, other people's problems. There's nothing wrong with 
you know, in a ministry situation, you're talking to somebody and you're ministering to them and they're open to this ministry. They come to you for this ministry and they're open to you for it. That's one thing. But to absorb and think about somebody else's problems 24-7. Think about what's going on out here, out in the world, out everywhere else. That's going to cause th things to go on in your body, in your soul, in your spirit. It's going to affect you. The input affects you. Difficult to break emotional attachments can leave people emotionally crippled. There are many walking around. You can't tell it, but they may be going through a hard time breaking emotional attachments with someone that they were with or a group they were with. These attachments can affect other normal relationships. So in a, a family situation, and if you're a Christian and you have an attachment to an unbeliever outside of your family, that could be an issue. If you're a Christian that doesn't have eyes to see and ears to hear, the people that we connect ourselves with are important. And they can have a bearing on the inner person. Emotional attachments can be with past romantic partners, parents, friends. Anything can develop. It may not start off as an emotional attachment, but it can develop into an emotional attachment. I did a teaching in our marriage series talking about being attached emotionally as could lead to an adulterous situation, an adulterous relationship. So we listed three causes just then of emotional wounds. Emotional wounds in a family environment, emotional wounds due to past experiences, Emotional wounds due to emotional attachments. So if we are not whole in our inner being, problems will eventually emerge in daily life. Real solutions often involve healing in the inner being. And the inner being we're talking about in this series right now is the soul. And the inner being is the deepest part of human nature, fully known by God, but can be hidden to us if we're not in connection with God. Because God can show us if we're seeking him, and that's one way we should seek him for what's going on in us. It's fully known by God and different from outward appearance or public image scriptures concerning the inner being are second corinthians 4 16 for which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is what renewed day by day it's not going to be renewed if you don't put the word of god in you but if we're seeking God on a frequent daily basis, we should be seeking God in some way or form or fashion daily. Our spirit man will begin to be renewed. Paul likens it to running a race. We're running a race. And we need water. The water of life. Ephesians 3.16, we're talking about the inner person, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's where your soul is. 
nobody can see the soul of a person with their naked eye. It's the inward part of us. And this scripture says that we can be strengthened by might of the Holy Spirit in our inner man. So we're filling ourselves up with the things of this world or things that are not of God. We're not going to be strengthened in our inner man. Matter of fact, we're going to be weakened in our inner man. But it takes the knowledge of the word of God. See, it takes scriptures like this for us to know what's going on, to enlighten us, to open our eyes to what's going on. Romans 7, 22 and 23. The inner man, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Verse 23, but I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. We can't escape sin. If we walk in the flesh, if we walk in the world and we don't walk as close to God as we can, we're going to be pulled away. The enemy's job is to pull us away from God. Okay. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief cometh not, but to kill, to steal and destroy. And that's what he is, a thief. He's not taking because it belongs to him. He's taking it because it doesn't belong. To him. He's trying to take it because he doesn't belong to him. So we must be honest about our emotional issues and identify them. That's the first thing. We've got to open ourselves up to God. And we've got to be honest. Everything is not somebody else. We can't deflect things on somebody else all the time. We've got to take responsibility of what's going on inside of us in our lives. Identify emotional issues hurting people hurt other people hurting people hurt other people when our emotions are all over the place we do crazy things James chapter 1 verse 20 for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God so human anger and rage will not produce the righteousness that God desires. Letting anger and rage control us will lead to actions and attitudes outside of the will of God. And some people may have this issue more than other people. But I believe every human being walking this earth has the tendency to be angry. We can see in the Bible how anger led to murder. In Genesis chapter 4 verse 6. And the Lord said unto Cain. Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? Wrath sounds like a form of wrath. Cain's anger is visible in his facial expressions and demeanor. So God said, why has thou countenance fallen? So unrestrained emotional rage can lead to destructive actions. In Genesis 4, Cain's rage ultimately led to what? The murder of his brother Abel. So let's identify sin that comes through emotions and confess it as such and seek healing and deliverance from the spirit of God. So we want to identify sin that comes through emotions and confess it as such and seek healing and deliverance from the spirit of God. Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper 
but whoso confesseth and forsaketh. Forsaketh means turns away. Forsaketh them shall have mercy. Hiding our emotional issues prevents healing and growth. We can't grow in the Lord if we're stumped in an emotional merry-go-round. We've got to seek the Lord in our own personal relationship. The pastor can't tell you how to do it, really. The pastor may be able to suggest some things to a congregation, some things that line up with the word of God. But it's up to the pastor to even do those things themselves as well as is up to the people that they're ministering to have to do and seek God for themselves and their relationship with God. Kind of emotional issues can prevent healing and growth, confession and acknowledgement lead to mercy and healing so we have to confess it and acknowledge it we can't just keep turning our head and thinking it'll go away oh life is just like that i'm gonna have problems that i can't solve but god can solve them if we give them to him it might be a long road it might be a short road god can work quick or he can use what you're going through to strengthen you. Paul said that your afflictions, in other words, can strengthen you. If you walk through them with God. If you walk through them in your mind, your emotions. If you walk through them in any other way except turn them to God. Your road is going to be a little bit longer in that affliction. Psalm 32, 5, I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Not just doing something and say a blank thing and just say, God forgives me. He sees me. He knows. He knows I'm just human. I, 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 God forgives me. That's not a confession of sin. That's an excuse. You see, these scriptures in Psalm 32, 5, I'll read it again. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. First of all, what is the sin? God wants us to be specific. The sin of. Not just sin in general. I acknowledge my sin unto thee and mine iniquity have I not hid like we're hiding it from God. God sees that you're not acknowledging it and you can't hide it from him because he sees you in it. But he has grace and mercy and in hopes on us. He has grace and mercy on us in hopes that we'll get it. But if we're not having God as an internal as an integral part of our lives and we have more affection and allurements towards the things of the world rather than towards the things of the Bible then we're not going to get it we're going to walk in what some people might call a religious spirit so admitting our faults to God brings forgiveness and healing openness with god about our struggles is essential first john 1 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and paul says should we sin just because we have forgiveness and grace he wrote god forbid that's called abuse of grace God is faithful to forgive and cleanse us when we confess our sins. Honesty with God promotes his forgiveness and cleansing. And I must reiterate, honesty, not only with God, but if, you have, if I have a wife or I have kids or 
I have a family. I got to be honest with my family. I can't hide things from my wife and my family. And if I have a wife that has eyes to see, ears to hear, or a husband that has eyes to see, ears to hear, or a son or daughter that has the same, then I'm not hiding. But if they are close to God, they're praying to God about what's going on with me. They're praying. Because we don't ever know what God is going to do with somebody if we pray for them. We may be seeing it one way, but God's ways are not our ways. He may be seeing it on a whole different light than what we're seeing it. But we've got to get on his program. We can't just look at things how we always looked at them. That's why we've got to get the spirit of God in us so we can see it God's way. Do you think a marathon runner doesn't feel like giving up? Yes, especially if they have not practiced, if they have not done trial runs, if they have not done things to get themselves ready for that marathon. Yes, they're going to get tired and give up. If we're a Christian and we just rely on the Sunday services to get through, we're going to give up. The Sunday prayer meeting or uh, the prayer meeting we go through, rely on that for our prayer. We're going to give up because that's our church relationship. We've got to have our own relationship with God so we don't give up. Or we might feel like giving up. Because we're still in human flesh. But to the measure that we have the spirit of God in us. Is to the measure of the strength of God that we're going to have. That unseen strength. There's a song that talks about. The anchor of my soul. I love that song. I can't even think of it right now. But it's a beautiful song. Talks about Jesus being the anchor of our soul. So what's my anchor? My husband, my, my wife. What's my anchor? Yes, we can't take our spouses for granted. But they're not our anchor of our soul. Because there's some things that we might go through that they may not be able to help us with. Especially things dealing with the inner part of us. We've got to give them to God. Yes, we can pray together with our spouses or we can talk about them. But the healing and the deliverance part comes through the hand of God. Let's talk a minute about the relation between emotional problems and demonization and i'm going to go into it a little bit more depth maybe next week the emotional problems and demonization first of all not all emotional problems are demonic some could be purely emotional or some use the word psychological some could be due to actual physical conditions, such as chemical imbalances in the body. And some examples of this in scripture, let's look at Psalm 42, 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. So the psalmist's soul is described as cast down and disquieted, showing a state of emotional turmoil. The psalmist refers to God as the health of my countenance. And countenance is a person's face or facial expression showing emotional well-being is linked to physical health and appearance when the soul is troubled it can affect our countenance 
Another example is in Psalm 31, verses 9 and 10. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. Mine eye is consumed with grief. Yea, my soul and my belly. Verse 10, for my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity. What does that word iniquity mean? Sin. And my bones are consumed. So the psalmist describes their eyes and soul as being consumed with grief. Showing deep emotional pain that affects physical appearance, the eyes, and the inner being, the soul. The mention of belly and failing strength shows that the emotional grief is affecting physical health. That's why we tell people at the death of a loved one, yes, grieving is perfectly normal, but we shouldn't grieve excessively. He said, my strength fails because of mine iniquity. This is saying his strength fails him because of wrongdoing and sin. So Jesus is the healer in closing. Jesus is the healer of the emotional wounded. And this is not the end of this sermon on healing. This is just an introductory sermon. But Jesus is the healer of the emotionally wounded. Isaiah 61 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Jesus was sent to heal brokenhearted and proclaim liberty to the captives, which includes, but not limited to, those bound with emotional wounds. But not only Jesus, but he commissioned us to do Isaiah 61 1 Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28 come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest so Jesus invites those burdened and weary to come to him for rest including those with emotional burdens and emotional problems emotional issues so we must spend that time with god and just read his word meditate on his word and close out other things that are trying to invade our minds when we're with god john 14 27 peace i leave with you my peace i give unto you not as the world give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So Jesus offers a peace that's different from what the world can offer us. Next week, we'll talk about how demonization can manifest as emotional problems. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up ourselves to you our emotions our thoughts our mind our will and our emotions to you lord and we ask you to search our hearts try us and see if there be any wicked thing within us and lead us to the way everlasting lead us to your way and your will and your things O god in the name of jesus we praise you and we thank you for you are a mighty god you're able to do above and beyond what we can see with our eyes hear with our ears and think with our mind lord help us as we seek your face to understand your mind and your ways god give us eyes to see and ears to hear especially in our family settings god in the name of jesus help us oh god to be sensitive to your spirit lord 
and help us to walk in a way that's pleasing to you and our family environments, God, in the name of Jesus. Help us to consider our family members, what they might be going through, what they may have been through in their lives, Lord. Help us to have compassion in our heart, love in our hearts, Lord, in the name of Jesus for one another. We praise you, Lord, for your move in our families, God. We pray that you would turn around what needs to be turned around. Overcome, Lord, that we can overcome what needs to be overcome by your spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus. Heal us in our inner being, God, so that we may be more effective and used by you, O oh Father. We praise you and we worship you this day. Lord, we lift up our family members that are outside of the kingdom. And Father, we call them in by the name of Jesus. Lord, that you could use us, if you please, to touch them, Lord. Cause them to be able to open up to us, Lord. Not us force you on them, but them being open up to you. And maybe use us, Lord, as a tool in the name of Jesus. We praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Because the family unit is the strength of any nation, God. And we need strength in our nation. We need strength in our church, the body of Christ, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus. We worship and praise you this day, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.